Policing TV, uh, this explainer on the Police Race Action Plan. I'm absolutely delighted to be joined by Dr. Uh, Alison Hidari, uh, Detective, sorry, I beg your pardon, Deputy Assistant Commissioner, DAC, with the Metropolitan Police and on secondment currently to the National Police Chiefs Council as the lead for the Police Race Action Plan. Alison, I hope I've got that largely or completely correct. Yes, yes, that's right. Excellent. Um, we're going to do an explainer here about the Police Race Action Plan. Perhaps you could start by giving us some background to why it was that the Police Race Action Plan came about and bringing us through those last handful of years to the present day. So the Police Race Action Plan is a plan to make policing better for black people um, and that is for black people within the service but also the communities um, that we the police serve. The background to this is actually it's uh, a lot of momentum um, was carried through as a result of the death of George Floyd um, and uh, currently um, and at that time it was the Black Lives Matter uh, movement that actually created uh, a lot of discussion around racism, um, racism within the whole of society, but also uh, specifically the police. And as a result of those discussions of the movement and the death of George Floyd, uh, it was uh, something that the police service really took seriously and the police race action plan was born. It's really important also to understand the history of um, the relationship between some black communities within the UK um, and the police uh, in this country as well. So although the Police Race Action Plan really developed um, as, as a result of the death of George Floyd, actually, when we look back at recent history relating to a number of uh, incidents that have happened that have really dented the relationship with some black communities, such as the New Cross fire which is still very, very much alive uh, in the uh, psyche of some black communities. Of course, the death of uh, Stephen Lawrence and the uh, subsequent inquiry into that. And I could name many others that have really uh, affected that um, community um, spirit um, and dented trust, confidence, legitimacy in policing. So that is the background to it. And of course, as a result, we now have the Police Race Action Plan that has been around now for a couple of years. Um, and um, it's my uh, position as director to, to lead the activity and the actions uh, within the plan in order to make policing better uh, for black people. This is an initiative that is uh, led and supported by the UK College of Policing and the National Police Chiefs Council. And it's my belief that every single chief constable in the United Kingdom uh, has given their support to this this plan and, and the plan there with a vision to um, develop a police service that is anti-racist and trusted by black people. So that vision from uh, the original vision for that still very much exists then, does it? Yes, it does. Absolutely. Um, and the activities um, and the actions that we have uh, within the plan really have the foundation in um, working towards making policing anti-racist. Well, so what is published uh, just uh, recently is a review, a progress report uh, of how the Police Race Action Plan has been doing. So tell us, please, something about the activities associated with the Police Race Action Plan and, and hopefully how successful or indeed otherwise they have been so far. So the plan is basically divided into four work streams um, and the work streams have got specific actions uh, underneath all of those. There's uh, work streams relating to, um, you know, the use of powers, um, victims uh, within uh, the um, police um, in terms of the, the victims that we look after, um, black victims. Um, we've also got 
um, a lot of work going on internally to look at, at the culture. Um, and of course, uh, what we want to do is we want to make sure that all of those work streams, uh, the activities and the actions um, are being progressed. And we have been able to progress some activities and actions. However, what I would say, Bernard, is that there is an awful lot of work to do. So what the, what the, um, the, the plan is trying to address is decades of um, trauma that uh, some black communities have felt in their relationship with the police. There have been failures within policing to look after black communities. And of course, this plan has got to continue in the long term in order to start turning around those relationships. It's clear the, the two documents that you have recently published, uh, one an interim report, the second an associated uh, consultation and engagement report. It's, it's clear from the material within them that uh, trust of the police and of policing within uh, black and minority ethnic communities is significantly below that of uh, other communities within the United Kingdom. So have you, uh, in that, that uh, research that you've uh, undertaken, the consultation and engagement uh, report, ha have you ed seen any particular signs of progress? Uh, and, and what areas do you see the need for the greatest amount of, of, of activity and progress now? So most definitely for me, there is a, a lot of uh, progress, especially I would like to say um, relating to the uh, the amount of work that we've been putting in to uh, make contact, to speak to, to listen to uh, black communities. And we've utilised our partnership with grassroots organisations to go out and speak to a whole range of black communities. Um, in particular, actually, we have found that there has been a gap in listening to uh, the, the voice of young people. So uh, we have put a lot of effort into doing that. It's also really important uh, to say that I've been going through, um, the, going across the UK, um, I've been visiting different forces to see how they have also been adopting the Race Action Plan. And I have been heartened by the activity of what amounts to thousands of staff and officers who are working diligently uh, to um, address the, the needs of black communities. However, there is a long, long way to go. And I think this is why it's really important that we continue to encourage uh, black people, both inside and outside of policing, to keep talking to us and to keep getting involved in uh, scrutinising our processes, but also contributing to the, uh, the dialogue around how to improve policing for black people. So I, I want to come on in a second to what happens next, but if you'll allow me, I just would like to take the opportunity to flag up those four areas that you've mentioned in very broad terms. So uh, those four areas being work on internal culture and inclusive, inclusivity, uh, on the use of powers, community engagement and relations, and then protecting black victims. And the uh, report that you've published, the progress report, goes into more details on each of those. Um, as we move on to what happens next, can I just check uh, the, the police race action plan? It's, it's not always the case that every chief constable and commissioner in the United Kingdom puts their name to a single document. There are occasions when, for a variety of reasons, good reasons, uh, individual chief constables may not um, lend their support. Do you find that that support is there still from the National Police Chiefs Council and its members, so sp specifically at the highest rank, chief constables and uh, the commissioners? So all chief constables, as you say, have committed to um, signing up to the Police Race Action Plan. Um, that was agreed by all chief constables uh, very recently again, um, and also uh, a couple of years um, when, ago when the, the Police Race Action Plan uh, was set up. The one thing I will say is that when I go from force to force, that there is more activity in some forces than there is in others. 
And this is part of the reason why we, um, myself and my team, are going around to different forces just to see how we can support those forces to uh, increase activity, um, you know, better quality around uh, engaging with uh, their internal and external stakeholders. But also what I am finding is that there is an awful lot of really good practice that we can share from one force to another. And so this collaboration within forces, I think, is going to continue that momentum going into the future because the plan is not just for today or for two years or for the next five years. This is a plan that is here to stay um, and it is a plan that will continue for years and years to come. Let's not mention any individual forces. Uh, we get into all sorts of, of difficulty if we do, if we start naming names, names. but can you give us some examples uh, of initiatives that when you visited a force that you think they've got it. Uh, let's focus on the positives here. So what what sorts of things are illustrations for you when you go to a force that actually it's working here? Mm -hmm. So I think there are some really good examples, for example, around stop and search. So um, pilots to do things differently, including uh, the pillars of procedural justice in training, for example. I've also seen where we have um, black young people coming in to speak to new recruits about the experience of being stopped and searched. So understanding the lived experience from a different perspective. And so that has the potential for officers to really think when they are using their powers about how important it is to be fair, to be respectful, to ensure that they're using their powers in uh, the appropriate and proper way. There have also been some really interesting discussions around um, some uh, chief officer groups about things like white privilege and using that discussion to really reflect on their own experiences and how bias and assumptions can creep into decisions when you don't even know it. So there are a number of really interesting uh, initiatives that are going on. I think what's important from learning from those new initiatives um, and utilising really good practice is that we share that. There is absolutely no point in me identifying what's going on really well in one force and no other force knowing about that. So we have really stepped up that sharing opportunity through benchmarking. Uh, the team has gone out to every single force to identify good practice under the different work streams that we just talked about, but also to identify where forces are being challenged in some areas so that the central team can assist and help them to do better in those areas, because this is long term challenging work and it's important that we support each other with that. Uh, Alison, whatever Policing Insight and Policing TV can do to support you in disseminating those uh, good and excellent practices, very happy to do. Uh, in drawing to a close, I just want, please, if I may, to pick up on uh, two sentences in your forward to that latest uh, report. Uh, you say black communities are frustrated, fatigued and fed up with us, the police, promising and failing to change. And you conclude by saying change is happening, but this is the start of a long journey and commitments to improve policing for black communities and for our workforce. So much to do, some good work going on. And it's about continuing that progress over the coming months and years. Alison, Dr. Alison uh, Handari, thank you so much for joining us, Hadari. Thank you so much for joining us here on Policing TV to explain more about the latest report uh, associated with the Police Race Action Plan. Thank you. Thank you.